Yeah. He hardly made a deal with the last song of Jack Stone and Kenny. Hey, man. Jack would be proud. Jack would be proud. Jack would be proud. Jack would be proud. Uh, he was supposed to be here with the Sunday that Jerry was going to be here, and something come up. He couldn't make it. And they were going to kind of have a music and a middle service. Oh, really? Yeah. And, it, and that Jack just knew that couldn't come or something. Anyway, maybe the next time. Yeah. When are you going to be wrong again? Anytime <laughs> soon? Next week, be all right. All right. There you go. Thank y'all. I appreciate you being here. It's good to see everybody. <laughs> and I'm not going to let you get by. I know. <laughs> Look what we got over here, guys. We got a, a, an old member. It's still a member. Thank you. Thank you. How long are you going to be here? You'll be here Sunday for service? No, I'll, I'll, be, <laughs> I'll be in Midland. I'll, I'm just going to be in C City until tomorrow. Okay, well, we'll pray, we'll pray for all mercy for the people that are flying. <laughs> you know, I had some really great neighbors on the way up here. Really? They really love me, even though it's been as I, as I say one time, I said, we never had a love hate relationship. <laughs> It's good to see her. Uh, I've got the space. I've got a part of my kids can't see the read. I probably need them to see. Uh, the third Sunday lunch will be on Sunday, September. Oh, that's oh, old. Okay. We don't need that. We already did that. Okay, uh, New Life Bible Ministries will again be hosting the Autumn uh, Blessing of Trunk or Treat. Uh, that'll be on October the 31st from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, we want everybody, want everybody to participate that can. Uh, costumes are encouraged but not required. And we ask that you not wear anything scary or ghoulish or anything like make a fun costume so we don't scare the little kiddos. Uh, I think some of them, Brenda, don't you have some costumes or something? And you... I'm older as long as they want me to. Oh, okay. If you want a costume in particular, or get get home to you and you'll order for them. Yes. Okay. Uh, the candy donations, we've got uh, buckets set up at all the doors, uh, bag of candy, a piece of candy, whatever you can come up with, stick it in there, and uh, Peggy and a couple other girls will pick them up and we store in an office in there. Uh, last year we gave away everything we had and had to go back and get some more stuff. Wow. And uh, 340 something hot dogs. And Herman Mitchell got sick looking at hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> he was a hot dog too last year. So uh, it's a pretty big event and, and it's grown over the years since I've been here quite a bit. And uh, we really would like for everybody that possibly can participate that. Uh, those of you that may not have been here last year, we set up cars around the parking lot where the kids can come by and you give them candy. Uh, they can come up to the uh, hall and get a hot dog and something to drink. And it's a, it's a well participated deal. Last year we had the EMS here, police department, sheriff's <coughs> office, uh, had a lot of people here. Fire department. Fire department. Huh? We'll they're all going to be here this year good deal. Anyway, that's a pretty good, pretty good event for us, and we like for everybody to be here to participate. Do you want? Watch out, she's on the live. Yeah. Okay. That's not even here, probably. She had the mic, though, doesn't it? I don't know. Uh, I don't have any prayer requests that was turned in the last few days to me. Uh, let's, let's go have prayer requests. What? We do need to keep Brenda Cameron in prayer. I want you to go and give her She's not in there. <laughs> <laughs> we need to keep Brenda in prayer. And, and also, uh, 
and calm. Yeah, absolutely. I'll skate it again. Uh, we've got several uh, regular members. Oh, okay, go ahead. My husband and your priority is keep up, and the other not, and part of the ribs, usually. Okay. Just tap behind you. Got to keep my smoke pad. Smoke pad, man, I said. I got it down for you. Are you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Maggie Martin, uh, she's having trouble walking, and we need to continue to pray for David Bell. Uh, Lily? I have a praise and a, a prayer request. Okay. My brother is free of cancer. We found that out last week, and then Sunday night, my sister, his wife had a heart attack. So, but she's better today. Remember, Glenda Cranley, she's uh, at home, and she's great. She needs your prayers. And she watches you on TV. Do you have something else for you? Okay. Yes. I'll get a full cool update on him today when I get up there because I did it all of them today. Who? Oh, Rita okay. and also Glenda. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I want to mention, uh, you don't know, preach love you. I went to her in the hospital this morning. Okay. Why well, do you know she went to the hospital? Yeah. Okay. He was in the hospital in Snyder. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sunday, I went uh, to put Teresa and Alan some, uh, some lunch we had, and uh, Teresa was not. She was not up. She was in the bed, and she was not doing well. So I went Monday to the doctor, and he immediately put her in the hospital. She got fluid on her around her heart and around her lung and so they're got it they're trying to get that fluid off of her and uh, they when i saw her this morning they got most of the fluid off and uh, they were still working and they were working on her medication to try to get a, a pain medicine that will work right. that doesn't have a lot of like side effects or something like that so they're going to probably change their medicine up a little bit that might help. Okay. No, I wasn't aware that she'd been put in the hospital. Christian. Okay. Um, with my husband, Jake, I want to be first. He's been having a lot of aspirations in, and also my hand. I overworked it and I need <laughs> prayer because next week I'm going to be having to do a lot of work. Okay. okay thank you. Stuff you got yeah. I have a praise. Last week we uh, prayed for Lawrence Burleson. He had lung uh, surgery for had a tumor removed. Right. He was released from the hospital in Dallas on Friday, and he's on his way home today. That's good. Right. Right. You're going to have some money. We're just pulling her. Yeah, we're coming here to put on the prayer. I like to put my wife on there. She's had man, some bad days here lately. Been waiting for us today. Let's go call it prayer. Lord, we uh, thank you so much for letting us have one more day on this green earth of yours. Lord, we always appreciate the fact that we're able to be here and do what we do, worship and pray, ask for prayer for other people. 
Our church has always had other people's uh, concern and well-being is one of the most important things that we believe in here. The people we put on our prayer list, we sincerely ask that you guide them, help them uh, in medical situations, guide their medical caretakers, guide their caretakers that take, that take the time and their, to be sure that they uh, have someone with them that cares for them and cares about them. And Lord, we uh, we know this is your hand at work. We ask, especially for the caretakers, that you lift them up and guide them and take care of them and give them the courage that it takes to do what they do. Lord, we uh, have some very dedicated people in our church. They're dedicated to you. And uh, we continue to do this because we are dedicated to you, believe in Christian belief. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless this church, guide us down the path of the, of the right way, and be with us through the, both the good and the bad times. Lord, as always, I ask that you take special care of our military personnel, our emergency service workers, our medical professionals, guide them and give them the knowledge that they need to have to do their jobs and courage to do so. Lord, guide us through the rest of this day, the rest of this service, guide Brother James and his Bible study. Lord, I ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Pretty good indication. <laughs> you probably have missed that. 
Oh, hear me out. Uh, I did go speak to Teresa today. They, they're taking uh, some of the fluid off. Uh, she had fluid built up around her heart and around her lungs. And the x ray told her she might have some, a touch of pneumonia. Mm -hmm. But it could also, the doctor said, it could be that fluid that they're picking up that was then around her lungs. So he's not, there, she's not going any further until they get to find out exactly what's going on there. So she's not going to get to come home for a day or two. And, uh, but she feels a lot better. They got her on the medication that she doesn't hurt. So that's good. And they're hoping that they can regulate her medicine and uh, get her on something that she can take and it will keep the pain down and so that she can be better and more comfortable in this type of thing. Then this afternoon I went over to see Lena and it looked like they had a little family reunion there. All of her family was saying. And so, but I visited with her for a while. She is just, she's just there. Uh, she's okay. She's not in pain. Uh, she has fallen twice now. Don't remember falling, don't remember where she fell. But <clears throat> some of the stuff, so she's having some uh, issues, but she said, it doesn't matter to me. I'm ready to go. If God takes me right now, I know where I'm going to spend my time. Yeah. She said, if I live another day, that's fine. If I don't, that's fine. She's not, not worried about it. And so she's in good spirit. And uh, she loves the church. And she wanted me to tell all of y'all how much she loves y'all and loves the church. And so I told her I would let she watch it up sometimes on Facebook. I don't want you to be home watching us tonight or not with all her family there. But uh, she may catch it late. And so that's a good thing about this. You can always come back and they catch it late. Uh, may not be live at that moment. But. And we had a prayer request. There's a couple of churches, and I'm not going to name any names, but there's a couple of churches in town that we really need to pray for. They're going through some things right now, and I don't know all the details uh, because we're rumored. And I don't repeat rumors. And I just pray that whatever's going on, that God will intervene and they'll get things straightened out and get back on the path that God wants them to be. I believe that the devil is attacking churches more today than he ever has in the past. The only thing standing between him <coughs> And doing what he wants to do here on earth is churches. And that's you and I. When I talk about a church, I'm not talking about this building. That's you and I are the church. And I think he's trying and he'll use anything that he possibly can use to get into and cause problems. It may be the littlest little old thing, but the time that person finds out about it, this person tells about it, and this person tells about it, it gets it just grows and gets bigger and bigger. And pretty soon it's a great big one. It's a little big one to start with. But then it becomes a great big one when we don't take care of it early. So this Sunday, Lord willing, God don't change my mind, I'm going to start a series message on the seven churches of the book of Revelation. I think our church needs that. There's some things in there that God has used for the church and that he has set up for the church. And I think all of us, me included, need to reread those and see and ask ourselves, as a church, where do we fit? What's going on in our church? that God is comparing to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. But tonight we're in the book of John. We're
We're going to start chapter 17 tonight. We're slowly getting through the book of John. It's taken us a while, but uh, it's been, I think, it's been a good study. And we've learned a lot because John uh, is probably one of my favorite chapters in the work in the Bible. You can get about anything you want out of the book of John about any subject you want to talk about. Pretty much, he wrote about a lot of stuff and a lot of things that happened. And so in chapter 17, he's going to talk about trying to pray to his father and to glorify him. Why is that important? Why is it important that Jesus glorify his father? Because of this. He came and did his father's will. But he wanted everyone to know it. Every time that he did something, he said, I, it's not me, it's my father. All the credit, all the glory goes to him. And he said, I want to give him that glory. I want to show him that what I did, I did to please. But in verse 1 of chapter 17, it says, There are these words. And if you'll notice in chapter 17, after I get through with half of verse 1, Jesus does all the speaking from that point on. He said, this, These words, by Jesus, as he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee. So what is he asking? What is he saying? The hour is come. What does that mean? Because he knows that he's fixing to go to the cross. Yeah, fixing to go to the cross and die. Why would that, why would that, he want, he wants God to be glorified in that. Because the whole purpose of Jesus being born, living, doing the ministry that he did, and dying on the cross was what God's plan for you and I and our way of salvation. Because without the shedding of the blood, we have no hope. So he's asking, telling God, he said, I, I want to glorify you. He said in verse 2, as though have given him the power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. He wants to give eternal life. So that shed blood is not just a pact to help you get through. It's there and it gives you eternity. Everlasting. <clears throat> Not going to be in heaven for a few years and you can't do something else. Once we leave this world, we're going to go and live forever. We're going to have eternal life. <clears throat> as many as thou hast given him. Verse 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou hast given me to do. He said, I have glorified thee on the earth. Now, what does that mean? He did not bow to sin. He did not bow to the world. He did not accept the world's teaching. He wasn't even bowed to the devil when the devil tempted him in the garden. He said, I give God the glory, and I've done this to get glorified him. And then he said, in the last part of that, I have finished the work. So everything that God had in store for Jesus to do. He said, I did. I finished. I've done everything 
Father, that you wanted me to do. All the things that Jesus did, if we read about it in Lord John, every one of them was given to him by his Father to glorify him, to change the world. That was what he did. He finished it that day when he died on the cross. Because he remembered what was the last word that Jesus spoke on the cross. He lifted his eyes toward heaven with the last ounce of breath that he could see. And he said, Father, it is in Under thy hand, I commend my spirit. For all the way from the time he was born to the day he died on the cross, with all the glorified God. And to finish the work that God was doing. He said, He said, It's finished. I did it all. I did what you asked me to do. And then he goes on in verse 5 and says, And. So he's going to add something to this. And thou hast given him the power over all flesh, all flesh, that he should give eternal life to many as he has given him. This eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, Jesus Christ. I have glorified thee on earth, and I have finished the work which thou hast given me. And now, and now, O Father, glorify thee with thine own self, with the glory which I have I had with thee before the world began. See. He's telling John is writing by the inspiration of the Word of God that Jesus was with God before the world was ever born. He said, I was with thee. And so Jesus saw all the things that happened in our in this world before he left the portals of heaven. They tried all the uh, Homelandity to get sin in their life taken away. None of them work. None of them work. They would be good for a little while and then they go back to the way they were going. Remember when the children of Israel were let, let out of the land of Egypt? They praised God. They praised God because God had set them free. They get all the way to the Red Sea, and all of a sudden they were troubled. You brought us down here that we would drown. We might as well be back in Egypt. They saw the miracle that God did, and they crossed the Red Sea on dry land. You would think that miracle would have been enough to cause them to glorify God and to glorify Moses and tell him, you know, we believe that God called you, and we believe that God's going to protect us from terrorists down the street. He fed them by night. He fed them by day. They never had a want for anything. They were, had food. They had water. They had no provision to do that. God gave it to them. God took care of them. And then, what did they do? They even built themselves a false god. And so every one of them, it's simple, every one of them that left the land of Egypt, the older people never got to go to the promised land. For 40 years they wandered in the wilderness. For 40 years, people passed away and passed away. So all of those were gone. Only that new generation was allowed to go into the promise. Here's what they did. You see, here's the, the thought on that story. You cannot play with God and get by. 
I've got a doctor's appointment on the 4th of October to get try to get my knee. I thought about this, and I thought, you know, I could tell Dr. Maroney and not say anything about my heart problem. And let me just go ahead and do the surgery. And I thought, that's not really deceiving him. <laughs> not really lying. But then there's a problem. Every time you go, they have a thousand questions that they have. <laughs> In fact, they're going to get down to the point, have you ever had any problems with your heart? Then I got a lie. <laughs> Down. So we're going to, I'm going to be honest and, and go ahead and go and do what I'm supposed to do. I, I've got a, a doctor's appointment anyhow in October with my cardiologist. But I thought I'd go ahead and get one set up because I know we're going to have to go through the routine and uh, him checking me. Him set me up for an MRI, set me up for an X-ray, do my prep. All this stuff gonna have to, may take weeks to get done. So I thought I'd get ahead of the game and get some of this done by the time my cardiologist gives me the okay to get the surgery. And also, it would be easier because he will do it more. What am I saying? He's more likely to do it. My cardiologist give me that relief if the doctor calls him instead of me. <laughs> I'm, that's what I'm hoping. But yeah, we're, we're dry. So I'm, I'm hoping sometime I'll get this name replaced and y'all won't have to worry about escalator up here. <laughs> uh, now I lost the book. Six? Okay. He said, I have magnified thy name unto the man which thou givest me out of this name. Them, me, and they have kept thy word. Mercy. I have magnified thy name unto the man which thou givest me out of this word. Who are those men? The disciples. The disciples. That have walked with him, that gave up everything that they had, left their family, left their job to follow Jesus. He said, those guys are going to get glorified because they did what God wanted them to do. Now, God's not going to ever ask you to give up everything that you have to follow him. But he is going to ask you to give up the things that stand between you and him. Every one of us knows, we're smart enough to know what is right, what is wrong. And me not telling that doctor, I got a heart problem. Wrong. Yes. Yeah. And it gets, God gives no glory on that. And it makes me look bad in God's eyes if I try to do that. So he's telling us here, I gave these men, which thou givest me out of this world, that thy word, and they give them to me, and that they may keep thy word. So he said, if you long as you keep my word and do what you know is right to do, he said, you'll be okay. God will use you in ways that you never understand. Let your heart preach this on me today. He said, I don't want God to put keeping me around here. And I said, well, he's not through with you yet. And she said, yeah, I know that. 
but I don't know what he wants me to do. <laughs> you know? He said, I, I'm ready to go, but I don't understand why he keeps me around. I may have never gone to the nursing home. Seeing some of those folks that are in that nursing home. Have you ever asked your question, God, why? That he would keep that person alive. That has no life. They have no thought, no mind. They don't have no idea what they're there for. They have to be hand fed. They have to be, you know, taken care of like a little bitty baby. And they have no, they have no life. And I wonder, God, why? But you did go ahead and take that person home. I thought that for you. Finally, God gave me. I didn't like it, but God gave me an answer. He said, those folks are there to remind you of what kind of life you have. You could be like them, but here you are like me. So enjoy what you got. Live your life the way God wants you to live it. And not worry about what you're going to happen to you when you're through with this world. God loves them. God takes care of them. And so he said, don't worry about it. I have a reason for them being. Sometimes it may be their family. And through that, they might reach them. One of the things that Trina told me today, I, she said, I don't understand what God keeps me around. But she said, it might be that there are some in my family that need to be ready. And she said, and Trina told me today, she said, Trina, I want you to promise me something. She said, when you preach my family, I want you to give an offer. You got it. That's what you want. I'll do it. She said, there might be somebody that doesn't know you as your Lord and Savior. She said, I've got family. But I know they're not saved. This would be a time Maybe you can reach them and give them an opportunity to accept Christ as their Lord today. And I said, oh, I'm going to do it. I did somebody's funeral. They asked me to do something. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do my best to do what they want me to do. And because that fulfilling their, their wish. And that's something that you know, we do. Songs that they want to sing in their funeral. Uh, you know, I, I, we try to put those songs together. I'm so thankful for Debbie and Jay Dan. Sometimes they get stuck with a song that maybe they don't know. And but all of a sudden they, they come up with it. And they always do a good job. And I, I appreciate them. But I throw something at them that they're not really ready for because that's what the family wants. They may want to come here and wait for some. Play at your funeral. When I go, y'all can, can play, thank God, and great man, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work for me. Uh, yes, sir. situation where we look at those people who are like that and it makes you think about yourself and what you're doing. I saw a man there a moment ago who was an angel today that they had a terminally ill father mm -hmm. and he suffered for several years. Yeah. And 
because that slavery was shattered. Mm -hmm. And they were up in different places, mad at each other. And that brought them back together. Yeah. And that was really, okay. really hefty for some reason. Yeah, that, I mean, that was great. You know, the years different, you know, but she was humbly healed. Yeah. And her family was scattered, what he's saying, bitter at one another. But through her, they came together and they got the family back where it needed to be. So sometimes I do, I tell you one of the greatest things, I, I'm not a northern about the right now, but this, this is important. Tommy and I were in Hendricks and Compton. They got a pool that they call Hopkins Pool. And if people that are on the hospice, they put them up on that floor. We were visiting with a family that their mother was on hospice. The doctor said it's just a matter of our maybe day, but pretty soon she's going to go. The room was large. The bed was over here. They had couches and chairs and things like that for people to sit. And so they started talking among themselves what they were going to do. Making plans for a funeral, making plans to do what they needed to do because they were just trying to put everything together before it happened. They started talking, and all of a sudden, that lady raised up and she said, what in the world are y'all talking about? She went home, she lived in Midland, and she's still alive today. Now that's the awesome. But can you, I mean, I, you know, we all been there and saw the look on those people's face when she raised us down that bed and said, what are y'all talking about? Hey, I never just came to talk to I wanted to jump all in the of those couches in there. But it'd be exciting to see. To see how God works. In somebody's life, and how people can be wrong when they give up on somebody. Folks, let me tell you this. I don't know where I'm going. Where do I leave off? You on seven. Seven. Well, that's what we're going to quit. I didn't get far today. Uh, that brings down a good point, though, that I want to share with you. Never give up on anyone. They may not receive you, your message, but don't ever give up on them. <coughs> because God can work a miracle in anybody's life if they give them. I had people tell me that all preachers, I was in my first church, I was a young pastor, young and young. Didn't know any different. I thought I could do anything. God was calling me, fit me to. Back side of the world. And there was a man who lived in that home. And when I got there, I started talking to people about visiting, and we had an inspection program every Tuesday night we were going to visit. And something was said about this man, I, I didn't know him. And he said, Oh, they don't, you don't ever have to worry about going over and visiting that in that time. So that man there, who you know, he, he, he's untouched. I said, have y'all tried? And he said, oh yeah, we give up. 
a difference. He's mean, he's stubborn, and he doesn't have time to listen to it. What do you know then? What did I got to do? I got to go to that house. I want to see somebody that has given up. But that day, I knocked on his door. He came to the door and he said, what do you want? You. I said, I'm here to talk to you, sir. He said, what do you want to talk about? I said, I want to talk about hell. He looked at me kind of funny and he said, who are you? I said, I'm the new pastor of Calvary Baptist Church here in Calvary. Another one in Bible conference, aren't you? <laughs> yes, sir. I am. And I'm proud of it. But if you'll give me 15 minutes of your time, I will leave you and I will never come. They said, well, come on in. You're already here anyhow. So I came in with that. And I talked to him about hey. I didn't talk to him about Jesus. I talked to him about the worst part of life that you can possibly go through. And then, about middle way, I said, but you don't have to go through that. And I led that man to the Lord that day in the home. He came to our church baptized him. He became one of my deacons in my church. One of the good workers that I had in the church. The whole town looked at me and said, preacher, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's going to tell me that. I, I'm new to me. But I'm just crazy enough to believe I know nobody is impossible to read. If you want as you go the way God wants you to. So if you got friends or family in your life, <coughs> there's hope, there's love, there's joy that you can give them. They can't give you more than Somebody asked me the other what do I do about a situation in their life? I said, all you have to do is pray. So they won't listen to me. I tried to talk to them. I tried to do this. But they didn't. So I talked to them about it anyway. Turn it up to God. And just keep praying. And God will come through every time. Oh, Tommy. Now we buried her yesterday. <laughs> 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 That's not good. I'm going to and let them all take me down in New York. Yeah, you may be good. Let me give you an update uh, quickly. I, I apologize. I should have done that earlier. Uh, she went back to the doctor today. They're going to schedule her to go and have an MRI done. Because he said you should be a lot better now than you are. Uh, he said, with everything that you've done, uh, you should be a lot better. And so he said, we're going to try to find out what's going on. We got another appointment Friday with the uh, Dr. Bennett uh, to try to do some more work on that muscle. And then we're waiting to see when she can get in and get our MRI done. Doing pretty good. She's getting around a little. She's on, uh, thank God for Brenda, she bought a walker. And she's trying sometimes to use that walker. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, sometimes she uses the walker. But she's doing okay. 
That even was a little hard on me that she was determined she was going to be in her place. And I asked her tonight, I said, you're going to come tonight? She said, honey, I'm, I just want to thank you. I said, I said, thank you. So y'all just keep her in your prayers. Keep her lifted up. God's not through with you. He's got some things for her to do. I, I follow you, thank you so much for your blessing. Thank you for this time to get to get around this word with your people. Lord, I pray for our church tonight. I pray, Lord, that you will touch those that, that have been missing our service. I pray that this Sunday we'll have a full <coughs> service, that your house will be filled. God, that we'll see people saved and the hearts change. People get right with God. Lord, work a miracle. We bind the devil tonight. We're telling Satan, get out of here. You cannot operate in our church. And Lord, we, so the Holy Spirit is going to be the one that operates in our church. And we believe that tonight. And we're holding on to 